It doesn't look any better, Larry. All right, Matt, you're live. All right, we're going to go ahead and call to order the special meeting of the Jeffersonville City Council for May the 8th. It is just after 6.30, and I'll ask um, the city clerk to do a roll call. Councilperson White. Present. Councilperson Burns. Present. <coughs> Councilperson Paris. Here. Council Vice President Maples. Here. Councilperson Croft. Here. Councilperson Webb. Present. Council President Owen. Here. Councilperson Hawkins. Here. <coughs> Councilperson Ellis. Here. Let the record reflect that we have seven council members present via phone and two present here. Councilperson uh, Donnie Croft is present here, and so is Council President Owen. Okay. We don't have any minutes to approve. Um, let's go ahead and approve the agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, Mr. Burns. Second, Mr. Maples. Uh, Ms. Gill. Councilperson White. Aye. Councilperson Burns. Aye. Councilperson Paris. Aye. Council Vice President Maples. Aye. Councilperson Croft. Aye. Councilperson Webb. Aye. Council President Owen. Aye. Councilperson Hawkins. Aye. Councilperson Ellis. Aye. Nine zero. Okay. Um, is there any report of the clerk? Uh, yes, I'd like to respectfully ask if uh, is Larry Wilder on the call? He is. Uh, I would like for him to publicly state how the public now during these times and well, even in regular times, how the you can get something on the record and what the city clerk is allowed to do and not allowed to do, please. Sure. So, so basically the record of a meeting, truly the official record of the meeting is, are just the minutes of the meeting and individual citizens have the right to make public comp by your created ordinance based on your ordinance within that three minute time frame. Because we're in such a weird place, I realize that the ability to make your three minute statement is something that is um, not practical. It would seem that if someone made, from the public wants to make a public statement, they should submit what they believe would be a three minute public statement. And it's going to have to be read by someone, uh, you know, they, I'm assuming they can ask the clerk to, if you all want to let the clerk read it, but this whole, there's not a concept of just the public sending things to the clerk's office and saying, I want this to be in the meeting, the record of the meeting. And I that should probably come through one of the council members. Larry. Sure. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and they can read at the meeting, but the problem we obviously have while we're doing these zoom meetings is someone wants to send a written statement and I get it and I understand it. And the public, you all have allowed the public to make comment. You don't even have to let the public make comment, but by ordinance, you've done that in 2008. So for the last 13 years, there's been public comment. So public has the right to make comment based on your ordinance. Figuring out how we're going to do that now is, is an issue. It would seem that an individual has three a comment and I would suggest that because of the zoom meeting it's difficult for every citizen who wants to use their three minutes to make it if they can just provide it to a council meeting or provide it to the clerk and the clerk can see if someone on the council would be willing to read it in for that three minutes but I don't want to get away from our three minutes obviously and I don't want to get away from our entire ordinance on the procedure so that I mean does everybody think that seems reasonable Larry, do those comments, if they're submitted in writing, do those have to be read or can they be 
added to the record into the minutes if you, um, as submitted. If you all choose to make them a part of the minutes, you can. It's not a practical part of minutes, but you can make anything you want a part of your minutes, but your record is the minutes. In other words, the record of the meeting isn't what you all talk about. The record of the meeting truly is, and less than I've experienced this in tons of litigation. You know, people want to litigate the meetings. Well, less what are the record record of the meeting? If it's not the minutes, it didn't happen. Yeah. So, so you know, you can attach them to the minutes if you all vote to adopt the minutes with that attachment. That's sixty-five and Gotcha. I. It's really weird. I really. It sounds odd. <coughs> Right, right. Is there anything else? No, thank you. No problem. Um, we're going to go into unfinished business. I skipped over claims because we don't have any claims for special meeting. Um, but number nine under unfinished business is 2020 OR24 and an ordinance of additional appropriation uh, from the rainy day fund to fund the Jeffersonville sustains COVID-19 uh, small business relief program. Um, this is has been approved on the first and second reading, um, and there have not been any changes. There is um, going to be a resolution considered that will go along with this funding that lays out, and, and that was sent out a couple of days ago, the, the two-page document that had all of the um, project, it was the project outline with all of the eligibility, eligibility requirements, as well as some exclusionary uh, language uh, that was sent out uh, and attempted to be discussed at uh, Wednesday's meeting. But that went out on Wednesday. Um, and then before this meeting, actually, for the sustains program, I forwarded an email um, that had the actual application that will be live on the One Southern Indiana website once this is uh, kicked off. So that resolution will go along with these this funding, and uh, they will run that program through One Southern Indiana. So, if I may, Mr. Owen, ask a, a quick question. So, there, the Exhibit A, which I reference, is the, the initial document you provided, correct? Did you correct. want to add B and make it the application or not? Uh, we don't need to. I don't unless somebody feels that's necessary. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Owens, one of the things that concerns me is uh, I know of some small businesses that don't have access to one Southern Indiana's website. Is it possible to put this application in the paper in some way so that everybody has that? Well, at least a majority of people have access to it. We would, um, I, I don't know the answer exactly to that. Um, I, I I am comfortable saying that we would be able to make an application, a physical application available for someone who didn't have internet access, uh, but I don't know exactly the step we would take to get that. I hadn't considered that before now, but I think we could certainly accommodate so that someone could submit an application even if they couldn't do it online. Uh, I'm sure we could find a way to make that happen. Okay. No one has any further. I make a motion to approve on the third and final. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Maples and a second by Mr. Webb to approve 2020 OR24 on the third and final reading. Ms. Gill. Councilperson White. Aye. <coughs> Councilperson Burns. Aye. Councilperson Paris. Aye. Council Vice President Maples. Aye. Councilperson Cross? Aye. Councilperson Webb? Aye. Council President Owen? Aye. Councilperson Hawkins? Aye. Councilperson Ellis? Aye. Nine zero. Thank you. Uh, number 10 under unfinished business is 2020 OR25, an ordinance of additional appropriation from the rainy day fund um, for COVID-19 emergency housing this passed on the first and second reading in the amount of $10,000. Uh, I see Ms. Lindley is here from the health department. If anybody has any questions or 
comment or if we want to just have a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Burns and a second by Mr. Croft. Uh, Ms. Gill. Councilperson White. I do have a couple questions. I couldn't, it wouldn't come in through, I don't guess. Okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Go ahead. All right. Uh, a couple of, and I guess they're for Larry and Les more than anything. My question would be, if if this money is is spent, and so we're going to house people at the red carpet in, what what is the liability that the city is assuming for potential problems at the red carpet in? Um, since while we're the one, uh, is this directly going to us? The, um, on us or how will that how does that shake out Larry could I could you answer that <clears throat> so my observation and belief is this uh and Miss Lindley uh, unfortunately you get to hear this my opinion is you pass the money to them and they're on the hook for whatever happens there in other words you're just providing funding okay that's what I wanted to make sure that that was the case that we weren't accepting any real liability from this that, that we're just giving <clears throat> somebody else who's assuming that liability Right. And of course, I'm not going to be disingenuous. If anything happens, we're going to get sued. But I truly don't believe that we have exposure because we are funding something off campus, so to speak. And we're handing it off to that governmental agency and they're responsible for it. OK. And then my There's second question. It's so my second question. Uh, and thanks, Larry. My second one is if this money were to run out, which I don't know if it will or will not is is our plan then to continue as needed or is this it is this what we've decided to give and then we will be over and if anybody that is part of, wants to chime in on that feel free Ms. Lindley I would um, let you chime in if you have anything to add but yes um, there there is a grant that has been awarded um, the money is not here yet. It should be here next week. And there is funding in the grant to take over the uh, hotel rental. Also, as far as the liability, according to Catalyst and their attorney, they are, they are liable for any damages. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The liability issue, I, I believe, add. is also outlined in the MOU that I sent out uh, between Catalyst and the Red Carpet Inn. I would just add that um, I sat in on a conference call uh, yesterday at Pastor Moon's invitation, um, and, and I know that there was a lot of discussion about um, how operationally this whole whole idea is going to work and how logistically it's going to work and um, I know that they've even talked about you know negotiating with the with the hotel you know this is the first you know seed money in good faith for the um, the grant money that's coming from the state through the county <coughs> health department uh, so I think I think they have a good a good grasp on logistically how to make this work and and Dr. Yazel said when he met with us on Wednesday um, I think a couple times, you know, if this is not a viable solution um, to keep people uh, safe and out of the tents, uh, then they're they're going to continue with the tents until they have have the viable solution to to make those come down. Um, I think everybody's goal is to see that uh, come out of the the Claysburg neighborhood and and also keep public health at, at, as the number one priority. So I applaud the. Um, Health Department for working to that end, and I applaud Catalyst for for getting those tents up as quickly as they did because it was the immediate response to an immediate problem. Um, and, and I think that that those measures that they took probably saved from an outbreak at the shelter. Um, hopefully, this will help us move move on um, and into the next phase of that response. Is there anything else? We did have a motion and a second to approve on the third and final reading. So I'll go ahead and take the uh, roll call. Councilperson White. Aye. Councilperson Burns. Thanks. We'll be hard to 
Bill, you're muted. Aye. Councilperson Paris. Aye. Council Vice President Maples. Aye. Councilperson Cross. Aye. Councilperson Webb. Aye. Council President Owen. Aye. Councilperson Hawkins. Aye. Councilperson Ellis. Aye. Nine zero. All right. Um, the other uh, business that we have on the agenda is Resolution 2020 R6. Um, this is the COVID-19 um, response um, that outlines how we're going to uh, fund the initiative with the additional appropriation that we just did, the uh, Jeffersonville Sustains Initiative. Um, basically, hopefully you've had time to read that over. There, were, uh, there was a typo that I asked Larry to correct um, this afternoon, and that essentially was in how the process of this was going to be paid. Um, the process is laid out in the resolution um, that uh, a claim would come in for the first $100,000 plus the administration fee of 3.5%. That would get sent to one Southern Indiana. Uh, their committee would review applications, and as they were as necessary, if they needed additional funding uh, to fund applications that were eligible, we would send the remaining funding in $50,000 increments. Um, and the clerk is going to work with me to get those claims processed through the controller's office. And the controller will issue all of those monies to One Southern Indiana uh, as those claims come in. One Southern Indiana will be initiating the actual loan to the individual businesses. Um, trying to think, the only other, I think that's all that, the, that, that's the only clarification that we had to make this afternoon that the city is not going to issue checks to individual businesses. Uh, the city will issue the funds to fund the program through One Southern Indiana, and they will work with the businesses to make those payments and then um, remit those back once it's time for them to be repaid. So will an exhibit A be attached to the resolution? Because the administration has not seen any of the program guidelines or anything. It, unless I apologize that the revised, the last revised piece didn't have that exhibit. That exhibit was the, did you all ever get the two pages that Matt referred to that he sent back, sent out on Wednesday? No. Well, Les, what I'll do is I'll forward you an, an email that's going to have, it's, it was the first draft, it'll be five pages, and it'll have exhibit A. It just, just, yeah. Exhibit A will be there. Is that okay? Okay. That, that, that's fine. I just want to make sure we have exhibit A so administration knows exactly what the, what the program entails. Because I, I know there was some discussion at the last meeting who is eligible and who's not eligible. And I, and I had a question. Is, is someone who has received uh, assistance to the federal pro, uh, program through the Small Business Administration, all this that, that Congress has enacted, they have received uh, assistance from those programs. Are they eligible or not eligible for this program? So the, the application does ask um, applicants to list if they've received any federal funding, any state funding, or any uh, local relief funding. Um, and those uh, indications, it asks if they have applied or if they have been awarded, and if they've been awarded, how much. And those uh, factors will factor into the scoring that the committee uh, uses to consider to whether or not to grant applications. The resolution? Is there anything from? Yes, resolution number six. Motion to pass. Second. Motion by Mr. White and a second by Mr. Maples to approve 2020 R6. Anything else? Do a roll call, please. Councilperson White. Aye. Councilperson Burns. Aye. Councilperson Paris. Aye. Council Vice President Maples. Aye. Councilperson Croft. Aye. Councilperson Webb. Aye. Council President Owen. Aye. Council Hawkins. 
Aye. Councilperson Ellis. Aye. Nine zero. Thank you all very much. Um, with that, uh, there is in the program documents, there is a mention of the uh, committee that is going to oversee this program. Uh, that committee is made up of two individuals from one Southern Indiana or appointed by one Southern Indiana, and then two, I'm sorry, three individuals that were appointed by the city council. Um, and there were three individuals that came to mind from uh, the group that were helped put this together. Um, I was going to nominate Josh Kornberg. Dr. Kornberg is the director of development at Ivy Tech. Uh, he works with and around grant funding um, quite a bit in his in his job. Um, Mr. Burns, I think you had mentioned um, Don Allen with First Savings Bank, and then also mentioned was uh, Mark Munzer, who is with One Southern Indiana. I'm sorry, with uh, New Washington State Bank. Um, unless there's any objection, I think those are three very qualified folks who are um, well in tune with the community and with the, this realm of, of handling money. So I, I would uh, entertain a motion to, to any effect. All, all three of those gentlemen would be outstanding choices. Can I nominate all of them with one motion? Yes, you can. Well, then I would like to do that. Yeah. Second. Okay, there was a motion to nominate Mr. Um, Mr. Allen and Dr. Kornberg uh, by Mr. Hawkins and seconded by Mr. Webb. Um, we'll do a roll call. I didn't prepare you for this one, I'm sorry. Councilperson White. Aye. Councilperson Byrne? Aye. Councilperson Paris? Aye. Council Vice President Maples? Aye. Councilperson Cross? Aye. Councilperson Webb? Aye. Council President Owen? Aye. Councilperson Hawkins? Aye. Councilperson Ellis? Aye. <clears throat> Nine zero. All right, um, Mr. Wilder, you do you have anything to add just on, about the, the the ordinance or just in general? So no. Just in general. I'm just making sure. So, Les, I have a question. Uh, what's our anticipation of when we're going to go back to a live meeting setting, and will it be limited numbers of of public when we get to that place? Is that what's your understanding? Right. Right now, I've been told the governor's order to allow these meetings is effective through June 4th. Okay. Uh, but we're also getting indication that it's probably going to go beyond that. But right now, I can just tell you June 4th. I, 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 my, my, my gut feeling is they're going to allow this probably through uh, up through that, uh, at least through that July, late July when he opens everything back up. But yeah, yeah. So what I'll do as a body uh, on your own time as you're sitting around thinking about what do we need to do going forward, about what type of temporary rules we may want to adopt to facilitate the ability for the public to have input, like we had this little discussion at the beginning, almost in the same vein as public comment. And now I can tell you what we have done Planning Commission and the BZA, by law, we we have to have public hearings for those matters, and we've we've conducted those meetings online. But we've still we've had one person at the council chambers on the Zoom call for anyone who wanted to come in and give public comment. But we strongly encourage that they email it or call it in in advance to the meeting, and then staff would read. Uh, that comment uh, regarding the matter that's on the docket. So that's how we've been. It's, it, it's worked quite, they worked quite well these last couple of meetings with BZA and the Planning Commission. I, I built bills, bills on air and, and, and Steve, you know, so it's, yeah. we didn't have any problems. So with that said, think about it. And maybe that's what we want to try to do. And then the other thing I would suggest is we consider thinking about what we're going to do in, uh, August, September, when we go in chambers, if there's a limitation on the number of people that are allowed to, to gather in one place. But just, just generally, 
just kind of think about what you what what we want to do to maybe open up the line of comment to the place it was when we were meeting live. And that's all I have. Thanks everybody for for accommodating these pressing needs too. And again, thanks for being uh, so conscientious during this time that uh, you know we're we're all paddling waters nobody else has paddled ever before. Thank you, Mr. Wilder. Mr. Merkley, do you have anything to add? No. Uh, Ms. Metcalf, did you have anything? No, I have nothing. Okay. Um, we'll go to council comments. Mr. White. Thank you. Um, I just, again, would like to thank the council for uh, supporting and passing both measures uh, tonight. I think we are uh, doing the right thing. Um, I also want to thank again the Clark County uh, Health Department uh, and Dr. Yazel, uh, our health officer in particular. Um, he calls this measure that we're doing the CDC gold standard, and um, he doesn't have. Uh, and, and it was it was great to work with him, and and he's uh, very uh, hopeful as well as I am that uh, uh, the problems that uh, may arise will be handled. Uh, efficiently and effectively. So a uh, shout out again to Dr. Yazel and uh, it was great to work with him to find a resolution to this issue. Okay, Mr. Burns? No comment. Uh, Mr. Paris? I would like to um, uh, say something about Jim Moon um, as far as uh, I wanted to, uh, I wanted the clerk to put his statement in the record uh, but I don't know by reading this, it would take longer than three minutes, but I'm, but he is going to be um, on the agenda, you know, in the next meeting. And so I think he can address some of those things and any questions that you have for him. But I've, uh, the last couple of days have spoken to him quite a bit and uh, know he's in, um, he's in, you know, in a very stressful situation, first of all, but I think, I feel like considering that he's done a, a wonderful job. Uh, there are no positive cases, luckily, thank God. And, um, you know, for the system they have in place uh, seems to be working. And with this change, it's going to give him, uh, you know, it's definitely going to make his job tougher. Uh, he's going to be spread in maybe two or three different places. But he, he agreed that he, <clears throat> you know, that he would do it. And, and so <clears throat> that's that's why I voted yes uh, tonight because he you know he's been going back and forth. I just didn't. All I wanted to do is try to help him and not make things tougher. And it seems like uh, you know hopefully we will move forward and uh, continue to you know, have uh, positive cases. The other thing that I found was interesting is that um, there are fewer clients in the shelter right now, uh, which. Um, you know, their, their average is about 109 and there was 72 uh, this week at some time. So, but they were, you know, more, more coming in. Uh, but I, I just want to say that, um, you know, he's put his life into this and um, I think he's done a wonderful job and, you know, hopefully he can answer some of the, I think, misinformation that was put out against him um, on Monday, um, you know, on, at our next meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Maples? No comment. Mr. Croft? I have nothing. All right. Uh, Mr. Webb? No comment. Okay. Mr. Ellis? No comment. Mr. Hawkins? Uh, no comment. All right. I didn't miss anybody, did I? Try to keep track of you guys on the screen. Mr. Zell. Oh. Matt, um, yes. if I could ask Joe uh, Paris, um, when you spoke of misinformation, were you referring to my comments or something else? Yeah, there were some things that, that were said in this letter that he, he responded to, <clears throat> you know, in his letter. And did you, were you able to read that? I have, I've been, I haven't read it yet. Well, I, I would suggest you read it. I mean, the main thing is for us to all communicate and, um, you know, work together and um, and help each other, you know, make the community better. And, and so. But what, but what was the misinformation? It's, I mean, Mr. White, it's, it's, 
it's council comments. So, I mean, if you have a comment, uh, if you guys need to converse about, um, you know, clarif clarifying something, we, we can we can work on that after we get through the, the rest of the meeting. Um, did you have anything else? That's all. Yes, Sorry to cut you off, but it is um, after six on a Friday, and this is our third public meeting this week. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody on the council for uh, unanimous, unanimously supporting both initiatives tonight through this week. Um, nothing, none of this is going to be perfect, but hopefully we are working uh, towards positive solutions for the rest of the community on multiple fronts. And I think we have a lot to be proud of as a council and a lot to be proud of as a city. So um, with that, also thank you to all of those others who have uh, continued to work with us, such as the health department, Catalyst, many others, um, and one Southern Indiana. Um, if there's nothing else, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, motion by Mr. Burns and second by Mr. Paris. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.